Disgusting! There's no way I'm handing over the inheritance to this child. You see? Now, get out of here. Really, they just say whatever they want. Not knowing is scary. Fine, then I'll just file for alimony. Say what? Well, you've been having an affair, haven't you? My husband just gaped, speechless. I'm Lila. I've been married to Ryan, who's four years older, for a long time. He's the third son of a wealthy family, but you wouldn't know it from his demeanor. When we met, we were both fresh in our careers, not really thinking about marriage. He was my solace through the hard work. And before we knew it, we were considering marriage after settling into our jobs. I was surprised when he first mentioned his family. Even I, from the countryside, had heard of his family's corporations. I was speechless. And he just laughed, saying, But I'm the third son, so the family business isn't my concern. It made sense. His two older brothers were already involved in the business, and he worked in a different field. The brothers were better, and the parents never asked Ryan to consider taking over their business. At our marriage meeting, his parents were neither for or against the union, as if they couldn't care less. See, I told you, I am not the expected one. I smiled, but I worried about the complex feelings behind his eyes. Our marriage was peaceful. Our relationship with his family was distant, with no contact from their end. It felt lonely, but compared to the typical in-law problems, we were fortunate. However, everything changed when Ryan's father, Tony, fell ill. About my family home. One evening, he brought it up with an uneasy air. He looked like he had something very important to say, and I listened quietly. My mom asked for help with dad's situation. I had an inkling. Wanting to help your parents is natural, but what he said next shocked me. I'm thinking of quitting my job and returning home. I was puzzled. Returning home? What about my opinion? The right thing to say would be, I want to return, but what do you think? But I put myself in his shoes. If my parents were ill, I would be distraught and want to help. But still, we were a married couple, not individuals. Shouldn't we consider each other's feelings? These thoughts crossed my mind in an instant. Yet, I didn't want our relationship to crumble over this, so I let it go, missing a crucial point about his character. I understand, but we are a couple. I have my job too, and going back home means I can't continue working. I wish you had discussed it with me instead of just telling me. Ah, sorry, I'm just overwhelmed. Mom never relied on me before, always seeing me as an incapable son. I believed that was his true feeling. He never explicitly said it, but he seemed happy his mother finally relied on him. Later, I met his mother, Mary, after almost a year. She looked frail and weak, and Ryan seemed genuinely worried about her. Lila, you must think I'm selfish, calling you both back like this. I'm sorry. We don't know how much longer Tony has. When I thought of you too, I didn't want to have any regrets. I want to cherish my family. There are positions ready for you in the company. Come whenever you're ready. Tony might not have much time left. Mary was, after all, a stranger. I felt cold, thinking so bluntly. We were always treated like heir, the third son and his wife. Suddenly being called family felt insincere. But Ryan, with tears in his eyes, looked at his mother. Mom. It's okay, we're discussing it, and we'll come up with a positive answer. 
he was completely taken in. Eventually, Ryan and I quit our jobs and joined Tony's company, agreeing to live with him. I had no regrets about quitting, joining the company, or moving in. However, being deceived was another story. It turned out the promise of working at Tony's company was a blatant lie. I only did miscellaneous tasks there for less than three months. Then I was relegated to Tony's caretaker. It was a total betrayal. Lila, thank you for your hard work. Now you will be taking care of my husband. Three months into living together, I felt something was off. My job at Tony's company was menial, despite my background in planning. I had some experience under my belt, but that never meant anything at this place. I never thought I'd end up as a caretaker. What do you mean by that? I asked Mary for a clarification. She scowled and sneered at me. Typical of a girl from third-rate university, unable to understand simple things. It's caregiving. What else could it mean? I am not asking for a definition of caregiving. Do I really need to spell it out for you from one to ten? How dare you speak to me like that? So rude. Rude? I didn't intend to be. Talking back is rude enough. I am Ryan's mother, you know. I know that, but that wasn't my point. I was asking if they planned to use me as a caregiver from the start. Someone of your level wouldn't be of any help in his company. It's reserved for top university graduates, not for you. I did graduate from a decent private university, but it paled compared to Ryan's brother's alma maters. From her tone, it was clear they summoned us just for Tony's care. Frustrated, I locked myself in my room, and later I told Ryan everything his mother said. His response was, "Lila, you are an employee of Dad's company. You signed the contract. As an employee, you are supposed to fulfill your duties, including caregiving." Are you serious? What do you mean? He was so pleased to be relied upon by his mother that he sided with her instead of defending me. I was alone without him as my ally. The logical choice was to divorce and free myself, but my altruistic side kicked in. His mother, who had abandoned her ailing husband, left him in my care. Despite never receiving any kindness from them. I couldn't abandon the frail old man in front of me. I was a stranger after all. I could leave whenever I reached my limit. With that mindset, I started caring for Tony. Good morning, Tony. I'm looking forward to working with you and getting to know you more. That was how it began. I noticed his blanket hadn't been washed. Flipping it over, it was dirty. He had been neglected since needing care. Neither his wife nor children looked after him. I was saddened by the thought. Let's wash and dry your blanket today. It's nice out. He just nodded blankly. But it's impossible for me to lift him since he's bedridden. However, I realized that leaving things as they were could lead to hygiene issues. After watching some caregiving videos. I attempted to lift him and felt something strange. He was surprisingly light. I could easily lift him. Despite my initial suspicions, I cleaned his room and did the household chores. The only regular visitor was his secretary. A month of one-sided conversations passed, until one day, Tony sighed deeply. "You're quite resilient, aren't you?" "Huh?" I turned around, only to find him sitting up on the bed, smiling and looking at me. Tony, you can talk. Sorry about that. My mind has been clear all along, just physically frail. I didn't expect you to stay so long. Thank you. 
He apologized, clearly weakened. No, it's not like that. It's more like... I guess I'm being stubborn or something. I definitely feel like I've been tricked, but you know. It's hard to admit, I simply felt sorry for the old man in front of me. Did I look that pitiful? I stayed silent, but he seemed to understand my expression. Your parents must be wonderful people. My children never lifted a finger to help their fallen father. Perhaps I raised them wrong. His words left me with a bittersweet smile. Thank you for talking to me, even when I didn't respond. Your humming and stories were comforting. I felt embarrassed for singing carelessly. Would you mind listening to my story today? Go ahead, Tony. He shared his past. He had a woman he intended to marry, but to save his nearly bankrupt company, he was arranged to marry Mary. The woman disappeared silently. I found her later, but she had already passed away from illness. Why did you search for her? I wanted to marry her, to leave everything and be with her. I married Mary, who comforted me in my grief. But somewhere I lost my way. Now she's probably infatuated with her lover. Mary's affair was shocking, but it made sense why she never came home. Sorry for the unpleasant talk. Lila, could you stay by my side a bit longer? Initially, I approached my relationship with Tony thinking I could leave any time, but eventually he became a part of my life. Surprisingly, I didn't find the caregiving burdensome. I was simply fulfilling his requests. However, as time went on, his health deteriorated, and a year later, he was almost entirely bedridden. Despite his physical decline, he remained mentally sharp. I continued to tend to his small requests every day. During this time, Mary rarely showed her face, and Ryan, my husband, also stayed away. My attempts to contact him went unanswered. My love for Ryan had dried up. He didn't even come to see his own father, and left me alone in this house. I decisively hired a private investigator and found out about his affair. I wasn't shocked. Perhaps it was a woman's intuition, but I had a rough idea about his actions. I decided to divorce him and leave this house after Tony's passing. Amidst these plans, Tony had a seizure and was rushed to the hospital. Once stable, he began issuing various instructions to his secretary and lawyer. He called me to his hospital room and meticulously explained what would happen with the inheritance, outlining a plan that would send his neglectful wife and three sons spiraling. A few months later, Tony peacefully passed away. I was there with his secretary for his last moments. Mary and his three sons showed up without a tear immediately discussing funeral arrangements. Mary turned to me with a smirk. It's good you could fulfill your duty as a wife. I thought you were useless, but you found your purpose. Now you have no relation to our family anymore. We'll handle everything, so please leave. I looked at Ryan, who wore a smug smile. That's the situation, so... We're good with a divorce, right? Don't worry, I'll give you a fair amount of money. Just don't talk about the inheritance, okay? Disgusting! Thinking about the inheritance! I would never give it to someone like you. You know now, so leave. Really, they just say whatever they want. Not knowing is scary. Fine, then I'll just file for alimony. Say what? Well, you've been having an affair, haven't you? He just gaped, speechless. 
Mary was caught off guard and had the same reaction. I'm actually surprised that he didn't think I was on to him. Wait a minute, the fault is yours for not being able to get pregnant. No, that's not it. Regardless of whether I can get pregnant or not, infidelity is wrong. I have the right to claim alimony. You see, Ryan has a child now. What? Mom, stop. I hadn't been aware of this development. She had just given me concrete proof of the affair. Oh, there's a child. Congratulations. Ryan, make sure you pay the alimony. Let's go with the standard $70,000. Pay it now and we can divorce. $70,000? That much? It's a small price for a divorce. Sixty thousand for you and ten thousand for her. That's the going rate. Well, he looked awkwardly at his mother. Fine, that's a small price to get rid of this new essence. I have fulfilled my role, so I'll leave. How obedient. After all, you're just after the money. Don't ever show your face to us again. We'll see about that. I'm sure I'll be seeing you in a few days. I quietly left the room. Ryan paid the alimony in five installments over the next few days, and we divorced. I'm free now. Later, I was called into a meeting room by Tony's company's legal counsel where I found Mary and Ryan with visibly strange expressions. Why is Lila here? It's the president's will. Tony wanted me to witness everything to the end. Mary and her family reluctantly complied with the lawyer's prompts. The lawyer began. The next president will be the eldest son, Mike. Regarding the estate division, Mary interrupted. Wait a minute. The eldest son's name is Roger, not Mike. No, Mike is the son of the president and Erica. My name is Mary, not Erica. Yes, I am aware. Mary, realizing the existence of a hidden child, demanded. Bring that ugly child here. The company should be passed to the eldest son, Roger. I am the eldest son, Mike, and I will take over the company as per my father's wishes. What? You? Yes, I am Mike, the first son. The former in-law family was stunned. Just seeing their reaction was satisfying for me. I knew everything, as Tony had confided in me after regaining consciousness in the hospital. However, he himself had only learned of Mike's existence years after Erica's death. They met during a visit to her grave. Mike had been dedicatedly supporting Tony, and once I heard the whole story, it all made sense. Tony's decision to leave the company to Mike, someone empathetic and respected, felt right to me. Mike truly understands people's pain. A company leader shouldn't be mired in self-interest, but should instead be empathetic and respected. He perfectly fits this ideal. Mary's sons, on the other hand, were driven purely by self-interest. Anyone would agree that Mike should be the next president. That's invalid! The proceedings have already been completed. Well, we can overturn that with a lawsuit, no matter how much it costs. Plus, there's no proof that man is actually the child of a woman and my husband. My husband was deceived. He's too good-natured. Yes, Tony was indeed too good-natured. So he was deceived by your false kindness, the very person who tore apart his relationship with her. How dare you! Mike has been acknowledged, and DNA testing has been conducted. It's been proven that he's indeed the former president's son. 
As for the lawsuit, ma'am, you and your children have embezzled company funds. If you initiate a lawsuit, we will consider filing a countersuit for embezzlement. Investigations have revealed over nine hundred thousand dollars is unaccounted for funds. We will first demand repayment of these funds. There is a reserved portion in the inheritance, so some will go to you and your children. But we need to clarify the financial situation first. This was all part of the plan Mike developed at Tony's request. With the evidence already gathered, there was no escape for her. It was pathetic to see her standing alone at the forefront while her three sons stood behind, faces pale and shrinking away. They were clearly unfit to lead the company. Two months after this meeting, their hidden assets, including embezzled money, vacation homes, cars, and luxurious goods, were seized, and everything except money spent on food and drink was returned to the company. Of course, the three brothers were fired. They are trying to make ends meet with little money. According to Mike, Mary was now living in a rental with her eldest son's family, being treated as an unwanted burden by her daughter-in-law. As for my ex-husband, he tried to reconcile several times, but I refused. He didn't extend a helping hand during the toughest time of my life. I owe him nothing. I was deceived too. That child she was carrying wasn't mine. You get it, don't you? I was just wanted to protect it. But since it isn't mine, there is no need to protect it. Give me another chance. I promise I cherish you this time. Um, no, thank you. That was our last conversation. I heard he was now working in traffic control. At least showing some willingness to work. Six months later, I started my second life. I was now working in the planning department at Mike's company. Grateful to Tony for not only arranging the job but also giving me a substantial gift before his death, tax included. This, however, remained a secret known only to the lawyer Mike and myself. Even though Tony was no longer my father-in-law after the divorce, I regularly visited his grave to pay my respects. Thank you, Tony.